Hey, Michael, thanks so much for returning for our final and third segment on the return to the new normal post-COVID. So my first question here, as uh, as silly as it sounds, in this new world, when you've got people at at home, people in the office, where do you look? I mean, I think we've all finally gotten our video setups right, so we're looking at least in the direction of the camera. But now where do you look if you're presenting to some people are in the room and some people are at home? Yeah. For those of you who have been watching a remote classroom, so for those of you with kids or who are somehow connected to elementary, middle, or high school classes, I want you to think about the teachers you saw over the last year who did this well and the ones who did not do this so well. Because people get very hung up in the business world of trying to look very professional and they walk into a boardroom and they see there's a big screen back here, so I guess I've got to use that big screen. You don't. Technology is there to serve you, not you to serve technology. So I want you to think, and I encourage people to think about this. If you were hosting a birthday party, a big birthday party for someone, they're turning 40 or 60 or 18 or 80, okay, whatever the number is, and you have some guests who can be there and some who couldn't make it, but they want to be there. Think of your audience in those kind of terms and think about how in those situations, we pick up phones and we're passing it around like, hey, look, wave hi. Now you can't be that casual. But could you take a laptop and put a laptop in front of the conference table and have everyone there so that when you're talking to the audience, the laptop is right there and the real people are right here and you're able to keep all of them in your field of view? Yeah, you absolutely could. Could you have two laptops even? One there, one in the back of the room so people could see those folks as well? Absolutely. So take command of your space. That doesn't come across as you being casual or sloppy. That comes across as someone who is so comfortable that they actually are going to rearrange your physical space, not to make themselves look good, but to help the people around them. And that conveys presence and gravitas and confidence to any audience, whether it's clients or internal or whoever the audience might be. I like that. Here's another question is, how do you keep both audiences engaged? It's kind of like you've got the people here and you've got the people on the screen and how do you make sure everybody's engaged and you know, listening to what you're having to say? I'm gonna answer that question for two audiences actually. I'm gonna start for an audience you did not name, which is this, if you are going to be hybrid and you're going to be remote, it is your job to break the cord of multitasking, to stop doing it. And I know we've all been doing it. (laughs) I know, we've been doing it for 15 months and we all think that no one notices that we're doing it. We're like doing this thing. Oh, I'm totally listening to you, Melissa. I'm just just writing notes on what you just said. And I may or may not be writing notes. (laughs) If you're a hybrid, meaning that you're the one who is remote, it is your job to not multitask. And if Mm -hmm. you're doing something that is absolutely relevant and even essential for the interaction, name what you're doing. Hi team, I'm just pulling up that PDF you just sent around, or actually I'm waiting to make sure the attachment made it to everyone's inbox. Whatever the thing is, otherwise don't multitask. Make the application full screen, hide your mouse, clear your desk, put your hands behind your back. I don't care what it is because the thing is, if you are shown or you are showing yourself to be multitasking and not attending, the people who are in the room, they don't have that same sort of, you know, either luxury or detriment, however you want to think about it. So stop multitasking if you're remote. Now, on the flip side, let's say you are the person who's teaching or presenting or leading or or running the meeting, then it's a bit different. How do you make sure people are not multitasking? And the simplest way you can do that is just remind people that you can see them. So if they're not on video and you do have that level of kind of power or suggestion or clout, then ask people to come on video and make it a positive thing. Say, hey, everyone who's remote, this is the first time we have a mixture of a hybrid audience, meaning in-person and remote. So let's make sure we're all on video so they can see people's faces and then have some fun, move the camera around, have people stand up and kind of wave, things like that. So you break down this idea that the remote people have the freedom to do whatever they want because no one's actually looking at them. Similarly, you can name for people that you see them Melissa, actually, I'm looking at your video right now. It looks like you have a question. Do you? Oh, you don't? Okay, sorry. I I misread that. Apologies, folks. That's clever. You might think that it looks like I don't know what I'm doing in that moment. No, because whoever Melissa is, i.e. you in this situation, you're thinking, oh, whoa, he saw. I was just scratching (laughs) my ear. And everybody else on all their video boxes has just thought the same thing. 
And they've been reminded that I am now on screen, not just with Michael, who's leading the meeting, but anybody else who's live in that boardroom. So it's a gentle way to raise people's awareness of, oh, okay, I better bring my best attentiveness and my best self to this interaction. Can you be more direct than just, hey, do you have a question, Michael? And say, hey, Michael, I'm going to circle back to you, but I want to ask you a question just to kind of make sure people are engaged and know that they might be called upon. Yeah. And actually, for folks who've watched the several videos we've made on this topic, that goes right back to that topic of question awareness and agility. Yeah. In other words, you're teeing up the fact that you're going to ask them a question or you're going to come to them. So in effect, it's like cold calling if you were a professor teaching a class you're alerting them to that, that it's coming. And it works not just for the person who is being alerted, but for everybody else too. 100%, I can imagine everybody around being like, shoot, I might get called on here. <laughs> I like that. So my last question is, is the day of the physical deck over? On the one hand, I hate making those decks, so I hope it is. But you know, during this remote time, we've all become much more facile with electronic and video sales presentations, sharing screens and what have you. Will that, trend carry forward as we all kind of return to more normalcy? Um, and if so, what's the best way to handle that if you're in person or even if it's a hybrid meeting? Just because if you're a video, clearly it's very easy to share a screen or to send an electronic deck in advance of a meeting that you can just refer to pages. But if you're in person, do you think people will still expect to see a physical deck? And if we don't, what's the best way to handle that if you do it all by video? My blunt and slightly humorous answer, when you ask me the question, is the age of physical decks over? I would say, gosh, I hope so. <laughs> you said I hate making them. I'm not sure there's a single person in the whole world who thinks, oh, yay, look, I've got a giant deck in my email inbox. I could look at this huge, extensive deck. Now, are they a necessary evil? Yeah, of course they are. And you have to transmit information to each other somehow. But PowerPoint decks, I mean, if we all of a sudden, they go extinct like some species of dinosaur, I don't think there's gonna be any group of people clamoring to bring back PowerPoint decks. And to be clear, Michael, it's not the hate doing the decks. I like creating the content. I don't like binding them. That's the thing I hate. So the physical creation of a deck is just tiresome and boring. Yeah. Well, then you're pretty far ahead of the rest of humanity who actually like creating the content. I mean, I'm, I'm thrilled for you that you are that passionate about the information you're sharing. And I like making some decks, but you know, if we rate what people like to do on a list, I think either creating or reading extensive decks is probably not too high on the list. To your point though, about just the nuts and bolts, like will I have to make a, a laminated book anymore? I think that may slowly disappear. Now it's hard to make these predictions, of course, the death of email has been predicted since probably, I don't know, 1998 or something. And Slack was going to completely displace it. Email is still here. So will these things go away entirely? Probably not. People like three-dimensional paper. They like to mark on things. But will things transform? Yeah. And should you be tech savvy enough to communicate in multiple ways? Absolutely. So the best thing to do here, and the simplest answer, is just ask people. Ask people in advance. If it's a client, that's an easy one. Do you want a hard copy of this deck? And then bring the deck anyway so that you have it in case they change their mind, but also have a digital asset that you can show. Screen share is something people have become very comfortable doing and there's some real advantages to that, by the way. So that's a way that you can mandate that everyone is on the same slide. You go to an in-person meeting, everyone's got a deck. What's the first thing they start doing? Flipping through their pages, right? And then they ignore what you're saying because they're looking exactly. at the now, by the way, skilled communicators can address that too in terms of what they say. So if you say up front, I'm going to walk us through this deck, but I promise you we're not going to go page by page and talk through every darn detail there. You're smart. You can obviously read it. So go ahead and put the deck aside right now, but I will direct your attention to page four in a few minutes. So when you do that, I mean, some people are still going to go rogue, but you're probably going to gather about 90% of your audience and then you can walk them through the materials as you want to. But the screen share, of course, because you're in command of that, that really gives you even more, uh, more direction, more ability. So you could probably find ways to do some sort of a hybrid, not to use that same word again, but it may be that we end up using both of these tools and in different situations. One of the cool things that I think people have had to do over the last year and three months is slowly break the fixed mindset that they have about technology. 
everyone has had to, you know, is one example, buy a ring light to make their setup look better. Everyone has had to learn how to use multiple video platforms and software. So people grudgingly are getting a little bit less of a fixed mindset about technology and people should bring that same growth mindset to how materials are going to change because they are. And you have now a wealth of different options, so use them. So I guess I need to go and get one of those ring things because I don't have one, A. But B, logistically, how do you actually present if you're deciding to bring your deck um, as a digital asset? How do you do that in a meeting in person Obviously, the people who are dialing in can have access to it, but do you pull up a laptop in the middle of the meeting on the board table and present it that way? What's the best way to do that? Yeah, what I would suggest there, if you have a large screen in a conference room, that's pretty easy. Then you just share your slides on the screen, however you connect to that screen. So that's pretty straightforward. And you have to remember that's in effect like having a, a, a movie screen behind you. So it's gonna put a lot of attention up there just because of the way we work visually as humans and how much light is coming at us. So know that that is a powerful resource and therefore use that with great responsibility. What I mean by that is make sure you're very clear to people when you're traffic copying them to certain areas, just like a traffic cop directing them, you can use that resource. I would not recommend that people do that same thing with a small laptop right at the front of a conference room table for the entire presentation because it's just such a small screen. You're gonna to have to keep turning your head like that to pivot to the screen and talk to your audience. It's probably not the best setup. So in that situation, you may wanna go back to paper decks that you hand out and then use the laptop just for essential things. If you wanted to show a video of something, if you wanted to show a chart, a graph that populates, in a certain way. If you wanted to use a stylus for a moment and actually get some writing on the screen showing a couple key things, and then you can toggle back and forth. So you can say, if you're following along on the deck, you'll see on slide four, go ahead and flip through your packet, I'll give you a second. That slide we've now actually populated into a graph on this on this uh, page of my, my, deck to, uh, my desktop right here, or laptop, I should say. I'll walk you through how this works so that you're actually demonstrating your facility even in how you use those two different kinds of resources and materials. And that shows you to be even more in command and people ultimately want to be working with people who are in command of their materials and their ideas. I love that, that's awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. It's such a pleasure to work with you again and I appreciate all of your countless insights pre, during and post COVID. And we're so grateful to have you as part of our team. Well, thank you. Well, it's nice to be here on both sides of it with you as well, this bookend of the last strange 15 months we've had together. So thank you. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Take All care. Right.